Visiting Shenandoah at the Arbor in Los Alamitos is like walking into Grandma's house for a Sunday family dinner. Its rural decor is whimsical and cozy like Disneyland and captures the feeling of the 19th century. The outdoor heated patio is speckled with shady mulberry trees and twinkle lights. It's enchanting and relaxing with a heated patio and koi pond. You'll be tempted to fill your tummy up on the fresh, warm apple fritters that arrive immediately after being seated. But be sure to leave plenty of room for the delicious regional American specialties that will cradle you with all the comforts of home. Los Alamitos, Los Alamitos, I always forget the city. Los Alamitos. I've never heard of this town. I, actually, I've heard of the town, but I didn't know they had a restaurant you like this around. spend too much time in Redlands. You have to get out. Well, you yeah, know? but this is what a fine this place is. Absolutely. I am, this is one of my favorites of all time, and I've been enjoying this restaurant for more than a decade. It used wow. to be actually located uh, in Long Beach on 2nd Street in Belmont Shore. Very adorable, wonderful restaurant. I don't know why they changed locations, but when they found this a piece de resistance. So right along uh, Seal Beach Boulevard in a very busy corridor is this quaint old section of bungalow homes that were uh, converted into restaurants and shops. So here we are and it couldn't be more adorable. It's like Disneyland. Oh, there's so much shopping to do around here and I feel like I'm eating at Grandma's house, like you exactly, mentioned. Exactly, yeah, little Laura Ingalls and yeah. Little House on the Prairie mixed <laughs> exactly. in with the uh, Twinkle Lights, etc. So the food is American, regional, uh, southern. First thing we have is called uh, the Trio Appetizer. This plate was impressive. It started with three nicely sized large jumbo shrimp that were butterflied, sauteed in, well, we're going to talk a lot about this <laughs> Cabo seasoning that they make, but the base of it was a Cabo seasoning, a little bit of vin a vinaigrette, and a smidge of jalapeno and butter for a kick. The shrimp were plump, they were succulent, they were firm, a uh, nice little crunch to them with a great kick of heat towards the end. Um, the cornmeal batter on the deep fried tomatoes was fantastic also again including that Cabo seasoning uh, and a nice spicy tomato cream sauce along with that and the last item was a really plump generous crab cake filled with lots and lots of juicy lump crab meat. It was almost all crab meat I mean I've, most of them I've, I've had are filled with fillers not this one. Exactly. But back to the sauce that jalapeno sauce Boy, you were, first of all, choking to death on it, but I know. it was a great kick and it was delicious. I mean, You have to go easy on it when you first take it in and a little squeeze of the lime and the tequila, but it hits you hard. But also the green, it, I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, no, it's okay. The green tomatoes were interesting too because they were solid. They weren't mushy or anything. I've had them before where they're mushy and they were excellent. Nice. They were probably nice weren't green. Fun. That's true. <laughs> so. That was, that was terrific. Now, you can get the side dish of the fried green tomatoes, and when you order that as an appetizer, it comes with sliced andouille sausage on the top, oh, which is really decadent. So, so that was a really good um, getting us familiar with their style of food on that trio appetizer. Very nice. Next came a great, great, great seafood gumbo. I mean, this is a real thing, folks. We're talking a roux based sauce with a seafood stock with okra, crab meat, shrimp, and it comes with a seasonal fish. This had halibut in it. Mm -hmm with white rice, big mountain of white rice in the middle. Mm -hmm. What a great roux, great, great uh, sauce, gravy, whatever right, you want to call it. Right. It was delicious, it had a nice flavor to it, and it didn't have filet in it, and that's fine, but it was just delicious. I really, really liked it. Right, absolutely. Well, gumbo is kind of the backbone of a lot of different, you know, cultural areas in the U.S., differentiated oftentimes by the thickener. Um, this one used the French-style roux, which is flour and water, as well as the okra, which Thickens a vegetable has got a lot of starch in it. So yeah. um, that's the Creole uh, influence on the dish. So and good. Fantastic, great flavors, glorious dish, big giant bowl, yum, yum, yum. I want more. <laughs> <laughs> but the Galveston pasta, hello. It's been my favorite dish up until we did this review. Now it's come in a close second because we had some other really great things, but this is a crazy and confusing pasta dish filled with unbelievable amounts of shrimp and chicken and sliced andouille sausage, big fresh penny pasta and a huge bowl. I mean, it was just rich and plentiful and full of flavor. And addicting. It did. <laughs> I said, you know, I'm on a diet, and I just tasted Look at it. Look at it. I mean, we, we, we polished off more than half of it. But that plate was piled high. It was so good, and andouille sausage really made this so special. It's got a great spice to it. I it, absolutely, it was excellent. absolutely loved it. Next was a bacon and hazelnut crusted halibut. This was probably one of the best dishes of the evening. 
This is about an eight ounce fresh filet of halibut, of um, Alaskan halibut. And it had a panko hazelnut and bacon crust. It was fried enough to make it crispy, served with a citrus blanc sauce made with honey and orange juice. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness, it was spectacular. <laughs> it was, no, it was ridiculous. That's, that's my new number one favorite. Crispy on the outside, moist on the inside, flaky. Beautiful it was like the sear, because they used the juice and the honey, so that gave it a little caramelization and it turned a gorgeous brown. So you cut into it and it was a little crispy, but the inside was flaky. Oh my goodness And the gracious. side dish that we picked, it was garlic, zucchini, and tomato Did sauté. Did you eat the vegetables again? Because I don't even the get near them. They were delicious. <laughs> No, it's all about the they fish. They made great veggies here. That was, a, that was just a superb, superb Excellent. piece of halibut. Then we had the granny's fried chicken, which again, is so absolutely comforting. I cannot um, ever argue with a fried chicken dish. This recipe is Rick's grandma's recipe and she will not even tell her own son or her own grandson what the ingredients are for that, uh, for that spice mix. But it's buttermilk soaked. Um, and also done in chicken fat, which is why it was so ridiculously flavorful. Um, it's deep fried. Uh... She, what the, it was a huge breast that they butterflied. I mean, this is a real thick breast that they butterflied. So, I mean, it looks it massive it, on the plate. It keeps that nice and tender when you do it that way. And great mashed potatoes and their gravy. I mean, the gravy was oh. done with chicken fat, like schmaltz. Oh, my Lord. Well, it went right to your <laughs> veins, but so worth it. Something special, absolutely. absolutely. Then we had the raspberry chipotle duck. This is another nice dish. This is a beautifully sliced seared duck breast, topped with a homemade raspberry chipotle sauce, served on a bed of spinach, Tossed apples and bacon. More I bacon. Thought, I never thought spinach, bacon, and apples <laughs> would go together. so happy. <laughs> bring on the pig. Bacon, I know. Just bring it More on. More piggy. But it was delicious. A nice mixture. And Can we say meat? Lots of meat. Lots of meat. Big old 12-ounce Cajun ribeye. This came with a, just a perfect five spice pepper rub on it. A white pepper, black pepper, red pepper, green pepper, pink pepper, yellow pepper, <laughs> pe tons of peppers, peppers. thyme and oregano. And then um, of course they seared it. I like my meat, you know, I don't like mine bloody rare. I don't like it moving on my plate. Uh, so I prefer a, a medium ribeye, but the ribeye being the most flavorful of all wrong. the cuts of meat. This was really nicely marbleized, good amount of fat, great flavor. Then there was dessert. Oh, like we needed more, right? I, well, you know, we got to keep going. <laughs> Bread pudding, hello. Oh, my. Bread, eggs, butter, sugar, all the good stuff. Vanilla, cinnamon. Really, yeah, this was a super huge portion of bread pudding. Very, very dense, um, really rich flavor. It was uh, uh, finished off with a Southern Comfort whiskey and caramel sauce. Again, just super decadent. Uh, they used their homemade yeast rolls to use as the bread uh, conduit to the rest of the ingredients. And they put a little bit of a vanilla bean uh, ice cream on top of that. It doesn't normally come with the strawberries. They and did that for me. Oh, okay. <laughs> they did that for me. So. Well, we're on diet, you know. So, but uh, what, a, what a great way to end a spectacular meal. And there's a couple other little thoughtful. <laughs> hey, it's indoors, outdoors. So, you know, sometimes we have friends yeah. flying around. But some thoughtful preparations and presentations that I think are highly unusual. The first one being the apple fritter. I mean, the second you sit down, they serve you this plate of warm, you know, doughy, apple beautiful fritters deep covered fried. in deep, you know, again, you have to be careful not to fill up on those because... Well, they give you as much as you want, right? <laughs> yeah, so could it be like Costco? Yes. Could it be like Costco, you walk in, I'm not sure, let me look, they bring it to you and you just right. eat about four or five right. dozen and then, and then you're water. done and then you're, for, you're sorry that you ordered, you almost want to sneak out the have, back. Yeah. But, but then they do, you know, all the meals come with the fritters and a salad, but their salad presentation here is different. They don't just serve you a bowl of salad, they actually come by with a produce basket of fresh produce and allow you to make your own selections and build your own salad, which I think is just I mean, such a sweet, sweet hospitality well, southern you, touch. You feel like you're in the south. I mean, the, the southern I've never, never it, been there, but I, I heard I, they're we, nice. Well, this, this is like it. I mean, I feel very close, very friendly staff here, and just to get a lot of a lot of love here, a lot of passion. A lot of passion. It's a family-owned business, and Rick and Jill's uh, both of their children are. Uh, learning the business and helping to operate it, and uh, I think that's why it stays a, a, a staple for right. this particular I, area. I know this is a restaurant, but I got to talk about the koi. I'm a big koi. Oh, fan. okay. The I'm outside sorry. I know is gorgeous. The size of these koi, these are like some of the biggest koi. It's almost like. Are they in a pond, Alan? It's a beautiful okay, pond. Okay, good to talk about the pond. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're, just, they're, not, they're very happy we're not a sushi restaurant. <laughs> But beautiful koi, it's just such a tranquil, relaxing restaurant, whether you sit inside or outside. Absolutely, and definitely destination location. I mean, they heat the patio year round. 
beautiful mulberry trees, gorgeous twinkle lights. It's super romantic. Um, I mean, share a meal, share an appetizer, get the dessert, and have a little champagne. Okay, now let's wrap it up. My favorites for sure, the halibut, the fried chicken, the steak. <laughs> no, you get one. Oh, oh. Two, maybe two. Uh, okay, the fried chicken and the uh, halibut. Well, you would come back for those. Oh, yeah, okay. along with the steak. Mine and... <laughs> used to be the pasta. Um, it just fell short today, not out of its sheer perfection, but only because the halibut it was so stellar. And the gumbo. Oh. I had never tasted it. I know, it's really hard to more, choose. Give me some more, please. It's hard to choose. Okay, but one Everything more. we tasted was beautiful. I know, what a we great, thank, we great choice. We thank them very much here at Shenandoah's. Well, today, with a fake, <laughs> fake <laughs> menu in hand, I'm off to Marietta to go to Sebastian's Italian Grill. Oh, I heard that place was great. All right, one day we got to yeah. get real ones. Yeah, have a good drive. <laughs> okay. I'm staying, as usual, doing my leftovers. Now, wait, I forgot all about this. You know, both of us are on diets, right? Oh. But you said you eat one more piece, just one more, so... I'm taking away the ice cream. Are you kidding? You, you said you, you said you had one more bite. Five months to this. No! You said one more bite. Come on. One bite. One. Come on. It won't hurt you. That's right. It's just a little bite. That's all.